My name is Maryam Alwan, and I'm a Palestinian Syrian member of Columbia Students for Justice in Palestine. For the past seven months, a lot of us have been feeling despair. Some have said that this is the world's first fully televised genocide, with social media and videos from the ground shattering the smokescreen of lies that have been used to dehumanize our people for decades. Many of us have watched our brothers and sisters in Gaza suffer and felt powerless to help. We see the hijabi mothers cradling their children and the destroyed masjids and think of our own countries that may have been ravaged by war, whether it be Palestine, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, Sudan, Myanmar, or elsewhere. We know that the only marker of difference between us and them is the privilege of an American passport or visa, but feel like it's easier to turn off the images, keep our heads down, and stay out of trouble. We feel the Islamophobia permeating every aspect of our li lives at a level not seen since the early 2000s with every dirty look and every hostile question and decide that the system of power is impossible to fight back against. I'm here to tell you that we are not powerless. I was arrested at the first Columbia encampment that sparked an international movement. We had absolutely no idea what would happen when we first set up those tents at 4 a.m., but we decided to take that risk because we couldn't bear to just bear witness anymore. When I was carried out by the police, <laughs> when I was carried out by the police 36 hours later, the video of that moment went viral because I was smiling. I was smiling because I had a gut feeling that something had permanently shifted. I saw the thousands of over a thousand people gathered on campus, enraged, and knew that this was only the beginning. Then, when I got out of jail eight hours later, the first thing people told me was, did you know they set up another encampment? It was maktub, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. We didn't win our demands at Columbia yet, but we made history. People in Gaza made videos saying that they felt hope again for the first time. And that hope is infectious, spreading right back to us on American college campuses. No matter how much the system tries to dox us, smear us in the news, physically harm us, or threaten us with disciplinary action, they cannot take away our hope or humanity. It is the least we can do when our siblings in Gaza are dancing in the rubble, praying in hospitals, and resisting with all they have. When the world is against you, when you feel the weight suffocating you, you have to have faith in knowing that what you are doing is right. No matter what consequences I face now, Colombia will never be able to erase the community we created on the lawns, the sense of relief as the Adhan or Anadami Falastini played out loud in the middle of campus at all hours. The solidarity as students of all backgrounds covered the people who were praying to protect them from harassment. The love we felt as we sat and learned about the history of Palestinian political prisoners and anti-Semitism alike. We didn't like the society we were living in, so we forged a new one. And you all can too, whether it's through one-on-one -on -one conversations with your coworkers, sharing the reality on social media, donating, volunteering, or even just opening a book. We all have a duty to do what we can, and we will not stop until Palestine is free, inshallah. Thank you.